coming tonight. It's so nice that we had decent weather today as well. <laughs> uh, my name is Amanda. I'm the Adult Services Coordinator here at Cartersville Library. And if you haven't already, please, in our little kitchen up here, we've got some cookies, some chips, and some soda. Please help yourself. <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about writing. Um, the program is if you want to be a writer. And I've got three published writers here with us today. If you guys want to just briefly introduce yourselves, we can do more in depth a little bit later, but just give a brief introduction. I'm Claudia McCormick White, and around here I'm just plain old Claudia White, but I'm published under McCormick, so I still use the middle name. Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of books do you publish? I've written uh, <laughs> children's middle grade fiction and uh, mixtures of sci fi and fantasy books. I didn't hear your name. Morgan Elizabeth Heineke. Ladies and my name is Harlan Best. I've been in this area about 10 years. I love Cartersville. I grew up in Midwest. I'll make this brief. I'm like to put down everything I told you. Uh, never did like the cold weather. Um, I left home at 17 and worked my way through school. Um, some really gruesome jobs. It kept me going back to school. And since I've lived in Los Angeles, Tampa, New Orleans, the Gulf Coast, and Mississippi, and then we moved here and, and advice from some ladies in a writing group years ago. <laughs> I love it. So, um, my first novel was written at the age, actually published at the age of 75. Down there somewhere. I'll be 77 in December. I don't feel that old. <laughs> Anyway, the reason I mention that is, uh, I'm, I'm sure you ladies and all of you out there run into, oh, I don't find time to write. I'm getting too old, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, I have been in health and wellness and fitness professionally for 54 years, uh, including uh, I was a pioneer in the health club business. I've done medical weight loss clinics. I've done hospital weight loss programs. And, uh, been writing all that time. Um, so again, the message is, if, if you have that fire burning in your bones, find a way to do it. Okay. Thank you for double time. Shall I leave now? <laughs> <laughs> so this is our, our panel of writers, and um, we're going to give them some time toward the end where they can talk about uh, their actual publishing journeys and whatever else, what other insights they have to offer. Um, so we'll have some time for that. We're going to have a little bit of a presentation. I have prepared a little PowerPoint. Um, and y'all are welcome to jump in. <laughs> Please do with your own suggestions. Um, I've only been published in an anthology back in high school. Um, <laughs> I think it's only available at one bookstore in Atlanta. <laughs> That's, I, can, I can consider myself a published writer as well. Um, all right, so um, one of the great things about the 21st century is how the usually solitary act of writing is now so social. And the traditional ways people have published and shared their work in the past is evolving, and there are new and different opportunities to showcase your writing, and hopefully we'll give you some new ideas tonight that you can use. And writing is a relatively inexpensive hobby. Um, a pen and a notebook is all you need, and that's how you can get started. And if you're here tonight, you've probably started a novel or have a few things written down somewhere, some idea, and maybe you haven't finished it, or maybe you have, but you're just sitting on it for now. Um, maybe you have some good ideas, but it's knowing what to do with those ideas and has you stumped. Uh, we've got a green handout, if you have to pick one up, go right ahead, uh, that has more information, far more detailed um, information, and um, about getting started as a writer. And then we'll have our, our panel of published local authors who do a Q&A. And hopefully we'll chime in as we go through the PowerPoint. So, you want to be a writer. All right, so we've got a little box at the top. So what do you want to write? There's a bunch of lines in there. So give it a minute and think about what is it you want to write. Write it like you've picked the book that is published, and you've picked the book off the shelf and you're reading the back of it um, at the bookstore or the library. Does it make you want to read it? So if you have one already, just give it a minute. Write down what it is you want to write. What's the story you want to tell? Or just ponder. <laughs> There's also a block called You Are a Lit Star. And you, in there, maybe you can write down who are your favorite writers, who are your favorite authors, who do you want to emulate, who do you 
want to be like? What do you, what, whose stories do you like to read? Because we can consider ourselves all the stars. Nobody has to share, so don't worry about that. <laughs> this is just for your own benefit. referring to that as we go through the rest of the presentation. Um, <coughs> when I think about what I want to write, I always think about, I want to write a novel. And then as I got older, I thought, I could write a play. I could write a movie. I could write a collection of poems. Like There's so many different ways you can write and have whatever your writing is being together. Um, it doesn't have to be the next great American novel. It just has to be something that you wrote, you completed, that is yours. Um, so look at it from different angles as well. So, keep thinking on that. All right, so the writing life, getting started. Um, whoops, hit the wrong button. Okay, <laughs> are you setting aside time to write? This is always the biggest stumbling block for so many people. I don't have time, as is my brother. I don't have time to write. I'd love to write, but I'm too. Um, so what are you doing to allow yourself to write? A lot of uh, the writing group books that I consulted or that I've read previously um, have said you have to take, you have to own your writing. You have to own your persona as a writer. It is your job. You have to set aside from two to four every afternoon. That is when you write and nobody can bug you. You don't check your email. You don't answer phone calls. <laughs> you write or whatever works for you. Um, so on your handout, I got a couple of ideas of things I came up with of how to just get into the writing mode. So one of them is scheduling a time every day when you'll write. If it's only 10 minutes, if it's four hours, if you can only do it in certain blocks or certain times of the day, whatever works for you. But make sure you're consistent because then you get in the habit and then you want to do it more and you look forward to your writing time because you know it's there just for you. You can set a timer so you don't have to look at a clock. I know some people like to get up extra early before work or school to devote to their writing, but they know they only have until 7.26, and then they have to be out the door or something like that. So instead of checking the clock every few minutes, making sure you're not late already, set a timer. So when the timer goes off at 7.26, you shut your notebook, you shut your computer, you're out the door for the day, but you've got your full writing time. Another suggestion, have a notebook with you at all times. I have my iPhone. I have my moleskin notebook that I keep in my purse. I have a pad and paper at work. <laughs> I have notebooks everywhere. You never know when an idea or a phrase or a character trait will hit you. You'll definitely want to write it down so you can use it for something in the future. Has this been true for you guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have your notebook <coughs> you always have with you? Even at the bedside. There you go, yeah. <laughs> and um, if you're in the know with writers, um, this month is National Novel Writing Month, or NaNoWriMo, as it is known on the internet. And you are encouraged to write a $50,000, $50,000, $50,000 word, hopefully <laughs> $50,000 at some point, 50,000 word novel in 30 days, so during the course of the month of November. So that means writing 1,667 words every single day if you're keeping to that schedule. Um, I keep trying to do NaNoWriMo and I keep failing. And <laughs> but if, even if you only do it for four days, that's four days more worth of writing than you had and had before. Um, so even if you don't officially participate in NaNoWriMo, um, you can at least say, I'm going to spend the next six months and work on my book. Let's see where I go. Or however it works for you, or I'm going to make sure I write 500 words a day, or just 200 words a day, or just 50 words a day, just so I know I'm writing every day, even if it's just something like that. Another suggestion I have found, and I have found works for me as well, is to have a space that is just for your writing. And it doesn't have to be a desk that is completely dedicated only to your writing time. You can't use it for anything else. It can be the kitchen table. The kitchen table is my writing space but I have certain things that I have on the kitchen table. I clear away the dishes. I have my laptop or I have my notebook. I have my special mug that is my writing mug. 
I put on certain clothes sometimes. It says, I am a writer. <laughs> you can put on that black turtleneck, do it. Um, but making yourself feel like you have your office, you have your time, this is, this. you are a writer now, and you are just going to write. You're not gonna answer emails, you're not gonna answer the phone, you're not gonna talk to people who come to the door. No, 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 you're just gonna write. Um, and of course, that goes into wearing your writing uniform. For a few months, these glasses were my writing glasses. I wore a different pair of glasses, and I really liked these, and so I would trade them out, and these would be my writer glasses. And then I liked these so much, I just switched to these every day. <laughs> but maybe even that. <laughs> Um, and I have to put a plug for the library. We have loads of quiet places where you can come and write. We've got study carols downstairs and the little spaces upstairs. We've got comfy chairs. We have study rooms you can check out for about four hours of time if you just need peace and quiet. And we've got free Wi-Fi. So if nothing else, come to the library. We will encourage you. <laughs> we will support you. <laughs> and you can do research while you're here as well. And then really, it's just right. It's telling yourself, I'm going to write. This is something I'm going to do. This is a goal I have, and no one's going to take this away from me. And just making sure you do it as frequently as you can in a regular schedule if you can, so it becomes a habit. So at the bottom of the, of the handout, you are a lit star. Now this is a book, Ariel Gore, uh, she's an author who wrote this book, How to Become a Famous Writer Before You're Dead, <laughs> which is the best title. <laughs> And she uses the term lit star when she talks about writers. You can be a rock star, you can be a movie star. Be a lit star. People are claimed to be movie stars and rock stars even if they're not really. They've never had <laughs> a blockbuster film, they've never had a Billboard Top 100 album. No, 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 no. They just have <coughs> that personality, they have that persona. They just decide that this is what they're going for and I'm gonna be a rock star. You can decide to be a lit star. And that's gonna be you. You're gonna be a writer, you're gonna be famous in your own way. It doesn't have to be in the traditional sense. And claim it as your own. So that's where you start thinking about who do I want to be like? I really like F. Scott Fitzgerald, but do I really want to live like him? No. <laughs> you know, oh, I really like what J.K. Rowling has done with her life. I wanna see if I can do something like that. It doesn't have to be that ambitious either. But think about who you, what writers do you like and who makes you happy? What writing makes you happy? What kind of books make you happy? And then what do you want to put out in the world that can join that? All right. Oh, and up here on the screen, we have Grace Metallius and Dalton Trumbo. You may or may not know their names, but I just appreciate that Grace Metallius is a housewife, and she's working on basically like a coffee table with her, uh, <laughs> with her typewriter. Dalton Trumbo liked to work in the bathtub. <laughs> so the bathtub became his office. So it doesn't matter where you write, <laughs> just make sure it's for you. All right. So now we're getting the right tools. We've got Miss Angela Lindsberry up there with us. So this is where I had a lot of fun researching um, for this, this presentation. Because it's not just your computer, it's not just your pen and paper. There's, you can mix it up in a, little, in a few other ways. So what are, how do you like to write? Do you like to write on, on Paper or pen? Do you like to write on your computer? How do you prefer to write? Paper. Paper and pen? At first. At first? Okay. <laughs> Any others? Anybody laptop. straight to digital? Say again? My laptop. Your laptop? Okay. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. I have found I'm kind of transitioning, so I'm more like to write on my laptop, but I still like to have a paper and pen because that makes me feel good. So there's the old fashioned paper and pen, and that's a great way to start. That's how you get your ideas out. <coughs> that's how for some people, they, they might be slow typers and they don't have the fastest computer and it's just easier. They can write it out a lot faster. Um, there is, well, a few authors suggest um, you get notebooks with really funky covers. Like at the beginning of the school year, when all the Avengers covers come out, when all the Lisa Frank cat covers come out, <laughs> it is the notebooks that are you know meant for grade school kids, but anybody can buy them. And they just have funky colors, covers on them. So when you're writing in them, you don't have to feel so serious. It was a $2 notebook. <laughs> it's got a neon cat on it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about what's on the inside. Uh, it makes you feel a little bit better. Like you don't have to put down, you know, your best the first time. You're just putting down words and then you're gonna frame it later on. A typewriter uh, might be more your speed. Um, I have always wanted to really just write on a typewriter. And I have yet to find the perfect typewriter, but one day it will happen. 
Um, but I know some people prefer that because that's what they grew up on, or they like it because it's different. Um, so maybe that's something that will inspire you even um, to use a typewriter. And you know, if you're writing a hard-boiled crime novel, that might get you more in the mood to write if you're on a you know 1940s typewriter. Um, so your laptop, the word processor. Um, I I have in here that Microsoft Word is a standard. Most people use Microsoft Word, but if you don't want to pay for Microsoft Word, uh, LibreOffice is a free alternative you can download on your computer. It works very similarly to, to Microsoft Word. It's not as good, but it's a really good alternative that's totally free. <laughs> so if you need assistance with setting up, let me know. I will help you. That's what we're here for. Um, I've used it before. It doesn't save it in the same uh, document files, but it, it'll, it'll work for your purpose. It is a word processor. Um, and then this allows you to attach it to an email and send it to a friend, if that's what you want to do, or just be able to print it out and it looks good already. Um, a lot of people do that. Further down, we've got, um, there's a software called Scrivener that I've learned about. And it is designed to work with the writer's workflow. You can do, you can separate all your chapters and then so you're jumping from the first chapter where you introduce your characters and you decide, oh, I'm kind of bored with that. I want to work in the middle when the action starts to happen. So you write that action chapter and it's in a separate file. And then you can have all your research in another file and it's all on a cork board. <laughs> so you can pick it off and, and choose what you're going to write on. It's a, it starts out a little pricey, but um, it, if you're, it's something to look into if you're interested in having that kind of a workflow, all your work together that you can see in front of your face. Um, let me mention, at the back of my handout, I've got a resources page, and that has um, websites listed where you can find some of these things. Uh, Google Docs. I previously have not used Google Docs much for my own writing. Um, I, it's, it's an online word processor associated with your Google account, so your Gmail, if that's all you use, um, but you get a Google Drive, and that's where you can keep you know, files in there. So you can create a Google Doc. And then I can write on my computer at home, and then I want to, when I'm at lunch here at the library, I can write a little bit more in the Google Doc, and it's all saved in the cloud. I don't have a file, like a physical like jump drive or something that I have to carry between computers. It's all on the internet. And then there's another uh, application called Evernote. And a lot of uh, business people use Evernote, so they can, it's kind of an online filing system. But you can create notes and notebooks and it, yeah, a lot of it is for internet research, and that's something um, good to use it for. But you can also start writing. You decide, this is a notebook where I'm keeping all of my poems. Or this is a notebook where I'm keeping all of my character sketches. Or whatever you want to set up. But it's just another free way that's saved on the internet, saved in the cloud, that you can use for your own writing. Are there any particular ways you guys like to write? Um, I generally write in a notebook and switching over to using Microsoft Word, so I'm kind of doing both computer and notebook. Great. And I've started, um, since I don't have Scrivener, and I haven't decided whether or not to get it, um, I've figured out I can use um, the notebook program, I can't, forget, can't remember mm -hmm. what exactly it's called, but with um, Microsoft Office. A one up, yeah, yeah. To um, in a similar way to create basically an online notebook for my notes. Yeah, so if you already have off Microsoft Office, you know, yeah. one note, you can use that. Uh, same. On, on Scrivener, you can actually get a fifty percent off coupon if you win Nano or Imo, but you can also do Camp Nano or Imo in April and July. You set your own word count, so you can go for just five thousand and win. <laughs> That's good. Too. I, I did. Um, I did camp piano in July with a 28,000 word um, goal in one. Great. Any others? Well, I, uh, I like a notebook, as I mentioned. Try to carry one, particularly on a plane, and you can shut everything else out. And I use an iPad, um, a laptop, and a desktop computer. Mm -hmm. And I may be the only person in the room who's ever really used typewriter. <laughs> I just write on the computer most of the time. Okay. And I find that um, there's, there's something really to be said about the difference 
and then they take it to the driver. It's just very different voice that you have when you hand write versus when you write on a computer. And one of the pitfalls as far as on the computer is getting it out is that you always want to go back and edit it as you go along. Mm -hmm. That changes your voice. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Kay, I was like, Kay can end up in. Um, her editor noticed this one time when she was uh, in, she writes sci-fi books, and she happens to live by the water, and there's a lot written about living by water. Anyway, she could tell, she color codes her, her books uh, and for the characters and so on, and she could tell what was written by water, what was written by hand, and what was written in the computer. So it is really something to consider. It really is something to consider. That's an interesting thought, yes. <laughs> So that's why it's fun to try different things out and see how your voice, for instance, might change um, from one medium to another or using one system or another. Um, and I have a note at the end. Use whatever you want as long as it helps in your creative process and doesn't frustrate you. <laughs> if you're finding that uh, you've been through five different pens <laughs> and three different notebooks and you're just, uh, you feel it's just complicating your writing, don't use them anymore. Try something else. <laughs> Try typing it on the computer. Try saying it out loud into a recorder. Yes? Um, if you write it, then how do you get it to be typed up? You can either do it yourself, or you might have to hire somebody. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> might have to be like my parents in college, where you have to hire somebody to do it for you. So that's, that's something else to consider. And that leads into like a Sunset Boulevard situation, so you gotta be careful. <laughs> you can also just read it in. I haven't done research on the dictation programs, but I know they're out there. There used to be programs out like Dragon Speed and, and several of these, but now uh, with the new tools, it's on the ship with the new computers that should be on the computer. I mean, and yeah. You have to train it. You have to train it to use your voice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But how accurate is that? Because we've all done the text. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it completely yeah. screws up and yeah. you wind up having to go back and do the asterisk, no, 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 that's not what I meant. <laughs> sometimes you find yourself in embarrassing situations where you're like, that's not at all what I meant to say. And, you know, so Still I mean, how accurate are those? Yeah. Yeah. No, but forgetting blurbs of thought uh, just like yeah. that when, when you're screaming or, or when you're doing coffee in the morning or something. I think it's cool. Yeah. 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 See, that's not even something I even consider. So that's a great thought. It's be able to dictate what you want, to, what what your thoughts are, what your writing is, and then go back and edit as needed. Awesome. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'll like, have a digital recorder. I'll speak into it and then just transcribe it the next day. I do that a lot if I yeah. if I want to go to bed, but I'm not quite ready to shut down my brain. <laughs> <laughs> good thought. Good thought. All right. So we've got a few <coughs> ideas of things you can try. All right. So get inspired. Um, one of the things on your, on your handout that I have is Come to Writer's Block it is the library's writing group. And Bob here is one of our regulars. <laughs> but we, we have an hour once a month, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's still a commitment to your writing, to your writer's self. Um, we start with a prompt. Everybody writes for 10, 15 minutes. We share if you're up to sharing. And it's really funny how you can take one simple prompt and then get six different perspectives. <laughs> Nobody wrote about the same thing. Everybody wrote about something different. And then you get inspired by what someone else wrote. Or you get inspired by just whatever they bring to the group to share that doesn't even have to come from a writing prompt from writer's block. Um, we are meeting this, uh, no, next Thursday. <laughs> next Thursday. We do have that on, on our online calendar, so I'm gonna put in my plug there uh, for writer's block. If you aren't able to come to writer's block, or you're still interested in just writing, but not at that specific you can search for writing prompts on Google. I do this all the time. You just search in writing prompts. You say adult writing prompts, or children's writing prompts, or school writing prompts. There are so many websites out there that are dedicated to writing prompts for all age levels. Um, and even if you don't use the specific one that you find at the website, it still inspired you, and you still might find something else to write. So it might not be, you know, you might find a writing prompt that's meant for, you know, Mrs. Schneider's third grade class, but <laughs> you found something of worth in there before you know it. You've got five pages written and you're ready to go. And it's <laughs> more adult instead of for a third grade. So you never know what will happen. 
Yeah. So try that. Another example of the writing prompt that looks like. What is a writing prompt? Just an idea saying, um, here is a photo of three people. Write about why they're there. Or, um, you know, two brothers meet at, at their mother's house. Why are they there? Or write about the color blue. <laughs> Just something that sparks a thought. All right, let's say dark and stormy now. Yeah, or a dark and stormy night. <laughs> like Snoopy, yes. One prompt I saw on Pinterest was something about a child with an imagination so strong at least in the reality. Oh. So there's <laughs> all kinds of things. I have some saved on Pinterest that I haven't used. But Fabulous, yes. And that's a great way to, to gather them is getting from Pinterest as well. That's another medium I didn't go too much into. Yeah, oh yeah. Tumblr and Pinterest especially, they are probably really good for writing prompts. Yeah, it's very good for a lot of writing. Oh, yeah. It's really good for lots of writing stuff, like creating storyboards and stuff. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You'll have to go into that a little later. <laughs> um, you can keep a journal. I keep a journal, I am not regular with it, I try to make it a daily thing, it's not. But I try to write it fairly regularly, so you're, you, I'm at least writing, and that's what you can do as well. It's your private thoughts, you can just write them down. You can go on a road trip. Sometimes you just need to make a day trip, even if it's just a few hours away, just to get a different atmosphere, a different environment around, and that might inspire and trigger something. Um, on your handout I have morning pages listed, but that is part of the artist's way uh, system. It is a, it's a book put out by Julia Cameron that's, you know, to help creative people be creative, to get their creativity out. And another plug for the library, we will be having a six-week Artist's Way course uh, starting in February. So if you're interested, keep looking on our website and keep checking in with us. Probably in January we're going to start signing up for that. Um, but it's, morning pages are essentially, you just write three pages of thoughts. Doesn't have to be coherent, doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> you're, it's kind of like a brain dump, if you're familiar with that term. You're just getting all of your thoughts clear out of your head so you can think more clearly. You've, got, you've at least got it written down. So it can be about your day, it can be about the story you're writing, it can be about the character you're creating. You just write with your pages. <coughs> so that's a, that's a system that's worth trying for some people. Um, you can take a class in addition to the artist's way. I know there are writing classes you can probably take it at various schools. Um, your senior citizen, I think, the Elm Group, Bob, correct me. <laughs> the Elm Group has a, or what is it called, Elm in Marietta? Yeah, they, they have uh, occasional writing courses as well. Um, the next one starts in January, and okay. it's uh, held at the United Methodist Church on Whitlock, Whitlock. Whitlock, thank you. There we go. <laughs> and uh, eight-week courses, and you take up three uh, courses, <coughs> $40. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. And then you might come out of it with something that you can be really proud of. Um, also, in the, in the resources on the back of the, near the back of the handout, I have other books that we have at the library. Some of them we don't have yet. We can either reorder them to replace copies that have disappeared, or we can order brand new copies. Um, but the library will have all these books shortly. <laughs> um, so you can try one of those books, one of the um, you know, writers talking about writing, and seeing what inspires you. Sometimes just reading about how Stephen King got into being Stephen King, <laughs> that might inspire you enough. You don't even have to learn the mechanics. Um, but just reading about writers, seeing what sparks interest. I also have a... Um, a notice on the handout to back up your work. <laughs> and this is this is while you're while you're getting started, while you're really excited. If you are going straight to your laptop, straight to digital, um, make sure you're backing up your work. Even if you were just printing out each chapter or section or what have you as you go along, save it to a jump drive or an external hard drive or email it to yourself. Do something so there is a separate file of whatever you're working on because oh, it's the worst thing in the world when you think that the blue screen of death pops up and you don't know if you have everything. <laughs> and then suddenly you've lost all your precious work that you've been working on. So I'm just throwing that out there. If you need assistance with setting up some system for backing up your work, <coughs> talk to the library and we'll help you out. All right. So get writing. I found this tweet from Shannon Hale, she's a children's and young adult writer, and she said, when writing a first draft, I have to remind myself constantly that I'm only shoveling sand into a box so later I can build castles. I thought that was beautifully put. 
because what you were putting down, what you were actually writing the first time, it's not going to be very good, most likely. 90% <laughs> of it's going to be absolutely worthless. But you're getting through the process. You're, you're tearing down the walls. You're shoveling sand. You're getting all the, the pieces together that will make the puzzle work. So I have on your handout a bunch of suggestions. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, keep writing, jot down your ideas, see where your characters take you, write every day at 3 or 5 p.m. for 20 minutes, give yourself a deadline with a prize to yourself if you need it, get a notebook with a superhero on the cover and see how that changes your writing, <coughs> drive an hour away, pick a spot, write until you're hungry, what topic really interests you, write about that, is there a terrible movie you think is a good idea in it, write your own movie. <laughs> so, really, you need to see what system works for you, what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel happy, if you have a goal in mind, and then work towards it. And make it consistent. You're writing every day. You are a lit star, you are a writer. <laughs> this is you now. And you may not be able to publish something, but you're darn well gonna complete something. <laughs> um, so the, just, just get excited about writing. Just make sure you're doing it. Um, so it kind of ties into the get inspired because a lot of this then gets turned over to you. It's what you are capable of doing. No one can force you to write. You have to do it. So it's coming up with the inspiration and the need and the pull to actually do it. And I've got a few writers up here writing. Just so pretty. <laughs> and then the next step is get your writing out there. So this can be part of your goal. You want to write with a goal in mind. Something that'll make sure that you complete it, you have a deadline set, that you have a vision in mind of what you want to do with your writing. Can and I ask I, a question? Yes. Of the three of them up here. Uh, last, let's see, when it was in September, we went to an, uh, another location and there was a, an author there, a lady, from, I don't remember her name, sorry, she was from Watkinsville in Georgia, and she uh, made a statement that I found very interesting that you must have an agent now in order to get published. Is that true? But you're not breaking right. the big five. The big five, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. What well, do you mean by the big five? Publishers. Uh, of the many publishers that you're used to seeing on the bookshelves, as they are actually broken down to five conglomerates, five com companies, and um, uh, we really there are a few lines you can get into as far as big five or combination. But if you are going to crack that, you, you need to have an agent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are many other ways of publishing besides the big five. And that's what we're talking about mostly tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and publishing is really growing. And you don't, all you have to have is yourself in your book really to do that. Interesting thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I forget about my mother. Are you sure? <laughs> The old uh, adage, and I guess everyone here has heard it, is true for the big five and probably a lot deeper than that. You can't get published without an agent, but you can't get an agent without we being published. Without being published. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Right. I agree. It, it doesn't. But they're all alternatives. Yeah. And then in um, Ariel Thor's book, How to Become a Famous Writer Before You're Dead, she says, yeah, if you want to be published, it's easy to do that. You can write your six poems, you put them in a booklet, you staple them together, you're published.